Welcome to Listen Up Now and to let you know what's going on in your world and my world, your guy, my guy, Rye Guy. Really awesome interview ahead here today. We're joined by Belinda Johnson, certified holistic nutritionist and health and fitness coach at First Choice Primary Care. Well, welcome, Belinda. Thank you for taking time and joining us on our, this wonderful platform we call uh, podcasting. Well, first of all, let me thank you both for uh, having me on. I appreciate the, the time and the space and the platform to be able to le- talk a little about what I am an expert in. Uh, at least that's what I like to say I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And we appreciate the time as well. So it re- be a really great opportunity to take your expertise, share it with people who are in the market or, you know, maybe just want to learn more about that sort of realm and space. So, uh, yeah, that's a really great question to start, Leo. Uh, what was that again? Uh, three differences between a nutritionist and a dietitian. So um, there's really not a huge difference when it comes to the work. But the credentials may be what will set us apart. Um, so dietitians, they actually go and get the um, you, you have to have a degree to be called a dietitian. And you uh, a lot of the dietitians are board certified. As far as a nutritionist, uh, the one that I am, especially a holistic nutritionist, you do not have to have a degree or the element of P's behind your name. All those those are good. But it doesn't stop. Um, us from going to get the education and the continuing education that we need. So the, the, the biggest difference is the credentials behind the name as, as far as the schooling may take place. But as far as the education, the continuing educations, that's pretty much the same. Gotcha. And it's such an interesting world to me. I've actually been looking into uh, nutrition services as of late, you know, trying to get in my best shape, especially with the summer months approaching us as we get into spring. Uh, I did want to ask, you know, with that whole world in space, how did you find yourself sort of get interested in that topic and what sort of prompted you to get started? Well, I don't know if you can tell that I have this Southern accent. I'm from Tennessee where food is good, but not always good for you. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we didn't always practice a good, healthy living uh, lifestyle, but we could cook. And the things that we used to eat was not always good for our body. So it brought along a lot of diseases. And one of the things that brought me into the space of fitness and nutrition is when my father lost functioning of both of his kidneys. And the saddest part is that out of five children, none of us was in a place or a position healthy wise to give him a kidney, even if we were a matching donor, because we all have too many health issues uh, at that present moment. And so that was the day I gave birth. I like to say to Coach B Fit that I'm affectionately called in uh, the community. They call me Coach B Fit because I was considered a drill sergeant, because once I caught on and realized that your health and your nutrition is very important, if you want to carry out a purpose here on um, while you're living on this side of the land, um, it's, it's, it, it really just made me just jump out there and want to just help my community build and also help improve their quality of life. Absolutely. It can uh, relate when you come across life changing moments that give you a wake up call and nutrition and fitness and overall just Mental health is important, especially in today's world where we're constantly being overloaded with not only obviously social media, but just with everyday life. Now, I want to revisit really quick when uh, your father um, went through this journey, and I call it a journey because we all learn from each other. What was the number one thing that you said to yourself you wanted to change immediately? Well, uh, during that moment, when I got the call to um, come to the hospital, because it was like an emergency thing that my mom called and she was crying on the other end, asking um, all the siblings, all her children to come to the hospital. We needed to hear what the doctors were saying. When I was in the uh, the room with my father while he was laying on the bed um, in a state of what they considered helpless, I had a lot of mixed emotions going on there. And um, so, but one of the emotions I realized that I had is that I was angry. Mm -hmm. Um, Like anger came upon me because I wasn't in a position to help someone that had been the best father that a girl could ever ask for. Mm -hmm. And so right then I said, and I made a vow to myself that I don't ever want to be put in a position that if I desired to or wanted to help 
one of my other relatives. I want to be in a position to be able to do it. And the things that I'm going through now inside of my body, the challenges that I'm experiencing are preventable. And so that right there helped me shift in my mindset. It helped me to take on an, uh, a different perspective when it came to my health. Absolutely. I know you said that was sort of the birth of Coach B Fit, you know, this uh, this dietary drill sergeant of sorts. Uh, I did sort of want to then touch on, so from that experience and going forward, what were sort of the next steps for you? Did that influence sort of your pursuit in education or, um, you know, sort of the avenues that you explored from that point on? What sort of resources did you find from that point on? Could, could you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. So the first thing I did with little to no education in the health and fitness uh, industry, I just went cold turkey as far as I just started walking. And at that time, I had a 400 pound, a little over 400 pound sister. So I took her as like my first client and we just started a walking journey. Mm. And then we went from walking to uh, just eliminating things that was just obvious that we did not need, like the gravy with the chicken, the, um, the potatoes every day with every meal, the cake and ice cream or a dessert with every meal. We started eliminating small things. So the small steps that we started taking started making a big difference that was noticeable to the community. And so as the community got involved, they began to see the changes in our bodies and notice the weight loss uh, started dropping and the activity that was going on in the neighborhood that wasn't going on at that moment, like doing, getting up, walking at five o'clock in the morning before work. That wasn't normal activity in our neighborhood. And so we started doing that, which uh, provoked me to go out and get more education. So I started attending different classes that the hospitals would offer. And I started attending all the different types of um free classes that they were offering at the different colleges, local colleges that were around the Tennessee area. And that led me to go and get certified as a uh, first group instructor. And then I started a boot camp. And then I went from get, becoming a group instructor to doing getting um, certified as a personal training trainer. And from there, it just led to wanting to know more and uh, sharpening my skills and, my and grabbing on and trying different tools to uh, actually get to the place I am now. And um, now I partner with a uh, amazing Dr. Rucker, <laughs> uh, doctor, which is Dr. Aria Rucker, which is one of the reasons why I um, decided to partner with her is because she she approached health, the health industry with integrity, compassion, and with an open heart. Mm. So she, she actually comes in, she listens, and she pays attention to what the patients need versus what they come in thinking that they want. And she doesn't just throw and push medication, although that is a part of some of uh, the patient's uh, co comprehensive care plan. She pushed the whole thing, like mind, body, and spirit. She she helps with the mental health as, long, as well as the physical health. It, it's like a care team. And then uh, she also includes physical therapy for those that need that. So it's like a whole thing, a whole team that she's created to um, help with the whole comprehensive plan for the patient, which is the ultimate goal is to help the patient improve their quality of life. So help sh teaching classes, attending classes to help continue our education when it comes to different and new things that they're offering. It's just about going, going out there learning what we need to learn to help implement it and share it with the patients. So they can just improve their quality of life, whether that looks like managing medication or trying to come off medication, whatever it is, uh, healing an injury that they may have experienced, uh, dealing with the whole care team and adding fitness, nutrition and PT to it. You, you're creating a, um, a I like to call it a trend setting. Um, mm. It's a very holistic synergy there being developed by all parties for the betterment of the patient. And once again, we're joined by Belinda Johnson, certified holistic nutritionist over at First Choice Primary Care in Rockville. And we would like to thank you again for this information you're giving us. And more importantly, we have a very important question from Rye Guy. 
Yeah, it, you touched on some really great things there, you know, at the start, you know, especially about taking those first steps, you know, getting active, you know, taking it one day at a time, you know, and steadily building yourself to a point where uh, things become more manageable, you can put together a good plan. And I'm sure these are the sort of plans and uh, techniques that you use when working with clients, right? Um, so I did sort of bring the question to mind, I was wondering, how you approach designing exercise routines for your clients and like the varying levels of mobility or physical limitations they may have. So everything is done through a detail assessment. So once they see the primary care, I take what the primary care have charted in their, in their uh, chart. And I take a look at the overall health of the client or the patient. And what I do is to go through a detail assessment which includes uh, lots of questions uh, that talks about their lifestyle, their habits, what their goals are, whether it's sleep, um, losing weight um, or uh, if you may be underweight, gaining weight, gaining muscle, whatever that may be. We take a detailed assessment of the client, look at the whole care team plans that they have for the patient. And that's how the um the comprehensive plan for the nutrition and fitness part is designed out based off of the assessment that we take. But the assessment is very important. It's very detailed so we can get a clear picture of what we're looking at. And it, it'll help us customize the plan to fit the customer's ultimate goal. And that is to improve that injury and help get in a position where we don't have to repeat these injuries. So it's changing the mindset as well as creating a plan to help improve more, uh, to get them back to being more uh, with the mobility part that they they have probably have a little challenge in in that area. One hundred percent, and I'm sure there's a handful of health conditions that can you know influence sort of this approach and where you go from there. You know, I'm thinking of conditions like maybe diabetes, cancer, heart failure. Uh, I was curious because you had also mentioned sort of working with physical therapists and those principles there. Uh, I was wondering, you know, how you may integrate physical therapy principles into your fitness coaching programs to support these sort of clients. Okay, so the some of those um, diseases that you mentioned, like diabetes, heart uh, heart disease, and or maybe kidney failure, whatever the case may be, um, everything is built on a cellular level. So what we do is we we find out. Uh, what I mean by cellular level, let me explain that. Cells make up tissues, tissues make up um, organs, organs make up organ systems, and organ systems make up the organism. So the organism is us. And um, if you if you if we approach it from a cellular cellular level, it includes a camaraderie of people on the comprehensive care team, which include a physical therapist. A physical therapist is the one to help carry, help the patient carry out the plan that was designed for them to help them more mobile and, and, and gain balance and strength in areas that are weak. And so I, I use the example of a person that may have a weak heart. We need to get in a uh, get to a physical therapist to for the first of all, the guidance, the instructions and the help to do some of the exercises to build the strength back up. So we mainly start off with a um, low intensity plan, intensity plan for them to uh, possibly have some room, growing room to grow and um, build the strength up and where they may be start off, they may start off maybe walking 30 seconds. And then as the PT and the care team, which is the primary care, the fitness and nutrition specialist, get together and the uh, physical therapist begin to tell us the progress of the patient, we can begin to tweak and make any adjustments that we need based off of the prog progression that they're seeing in physical therapy. Now, I love the idea of the communication by all parties for a common goal. And I wanna put myself as a client and ask you, I'm an emotional eater. We were talking about that earlier. What are some ways I can eliminate going for that bad food right away, but still fit, fit the need for my uh, emotional eating? And so that's part of the comprehensive care team, because during the nutrition assessment, that that's one of the things that we identify your trigger points. Mm. We, ident we identify the trigger points to find out, OK, what is the root of the thing that that's causing you to go and grab food? that you know is not good for your body or that's, that does not go along with your comprehensive plan. For example, if you have heart issues, 
we shouldn't be gra grabbing fried chicken because that's just going to help add to the issue that we already have. So we want to know what is the trigger points that's causing you to go in that direction. If you're craving chocolates, if you have that, what we consider a sweet tooth. Okay, what we need to maybe identify what the body is missing. Maybe you're missing some magnesium in your body. So it's just about digging and finding out the root. And that's one of the things that um, I have to go back to. Of the One of the things that we we take pride in at First Choice Primary is that we listen and we ask a lot of questions with the patients so we can help them identify where the trigger points are and then implement the plan to help you whenever you have that emotional moment and you want to go grab this. We we try to help you and teach value there. Hey, your, your body is way it's worth more than that flavor cookie, that flavor, flavor <laughs> sweet drink or whatever. And so can, go take a walk during that moment. Take a minute to breathe. Go Practice these breathing tips. Because it only takes about three seconds to get over a craving. Really? But the, getting to that space to be able to stop and pause is what we help uh, patients to get to. So there are mental exercises you can tell yourself to hold out for three seconds, not to run to the fridge or not to open that candy or jump on that soda. So three to five seconds is really the time frame a person can tell themselves mentally to get them out of that zone. Yes. And it takes practice. It takes practice. Like I said, you, you have to dig in and find out what's really triggering those emotional moments. And that's where the mental health um, therapist may come in and can dig a little deeper. But nutrition and primary care and PT all plays a part of that. Because all of it goes together. There is no one without the other. <laughs> and, you know, sort of talking about having the right mental you know, sort of mindset going into situations like that, it sort of brings me to this idea of motivating people in their physical activity as well. And, you know, we see a lot of that in physical therapy, of course, on our end, you know, people who are maybe a little hesitant or apprehensive to take those steps to get into the clinic uh, I did want to ask, you know, what strategies you employ to motivate clients who may be hesitant to start PT or programs like that? Well, for the, like I said at first, we, we help them see the value of their body, the value of their body, and um, digging deep, asking them about their passion. What is it that they love? Because some people just need a little awakening, mm. awakening on the inside to realize, hey, my, my knees are worth going to physical therapy. <laughs> I, <laughs> right. it or, or my nutrition <laughs> is worth, you know, staying away from the ice cream tonight. Yes. Yes. My <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty. Listen, I'm a Ben and Jerry's nut. I typically eat a pint. That's my problem. I don't know when to stop. <laughs> and yeah, to, and, and giving small steps, like I said, small steps produce big results. And so instead of trying to go cold turkey, take let's let's take one moment at a time. OK, so you may be you may be used to eating ice cream every day. Let's limit it to four days a week and then let's gradually go over to making our own ice cream. That way we know what we're putting in the ingredients. So we provide all different types of recipes as well to make the things that we may crave more, more than the, more often than we should. Um, we, we, we give out recipes to help them make it in a healthier version. That way, it's, a, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's you're feeding your body what it needs and you're enjoying a treat at the same time that's healthy. Right. And as someone I think I mentioned up top of the show, you know, I've definitely been looking into nutritionist services and, uh, you know, sort of different ways I could maybe adjust my diet to reach my fitness goals. I find myself currently at a place where I feel pretty good about my exercise routine and my general health, but do find like there's an extra almost barrier or hump I can't seem to get over to really get that like perfect beach body maybe so many people are, are aiming for come the summertime. Uh, I was wondering if you had any sort of suggestions for someone who maybe is trying to get over that final hurdle and really reach their peak f physical condition. So I will always say seek help and counsel. Seek help to if, if you if you find yourself constantly doing something and it's becoming like a vicious cycle and you're not getting getting the results that you want, seek help from professionals. I mean, that 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 is the 
number one start is going out to get the help that you need to assist you. Accountability is, is number one. So I would say get get you some accountability. Get 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 you a coach or a doctor to help to help create the comprehensive plan that you need. Pair it with fitness and nutrition. And if needed, physical therapy goes along with it. And then have some accountability going. So if you're up missing, you having a, one of those unmotivated days, you have a team of people who will come after you to help give you that lift that you need. Right. So and help keep you accountable. Yes. And that's why we're, we're so happy to be here once again, joined by Belinda Johnson, certified holistic nutritionist, health and fitness coach at First Choice Primary Care. Definitely a great resource for people out there, maybe like me or maybe a few steps in the other direction, looking for that accountability, for that discipline and for a good plan moving forward in their fitness journeys. Yeah, I think that's a great point there, Rye Guy, how you need accountability in the PT world and that whole space. Uh, number one thing we find is accountability to our clients to make sure we give them the best information and treatment we can. And <clears throat> with that accountability, Coach Be Fit, I have to put my man here, Rye Guy, on a 30-day challenge, and I would love to see how we can put something together and track his progress and in 30 <laughs> days come back and hold him accountable. Oh, let's do it. And let's join them, Leon, you and I. <laughs> All right. Well, we're definitely we go. going to find a way to make it happen. And uh, we're going to start with him first because I think he needs a little bit more than uh, the two of us. But I have a question, though, on more accountability as far as I'm a big beverage guy, per se, and I enjoy a, a nice refreshment after work. Now, I found myself really battling between switching between tonic and soda, you know, trying to watch sugar intake and all this. Uh, what would be some ways to maybe kind of curb that uh, need for sugar or a way that a happy hour crowd can really be mindful of their nutritional intake while, you know, having fun? Okay, so um, I believe in like the 80-20 rule. So that 20% is what I call, I don't call it cheat moments or cheat diet or cheat meal. I call it a flex moment. So if you're depositing more of the good, healthy stuff in your body, no, your body is going to automatically be triggered to crave the healthier things. And so on the 20% that you decide that you may want to go hang out with friends or do a happy hour after work or something like that, the 20% is not going to harm or bring any hurt, harm, or danger toward you. Uh, you just do that one thing you're going to do. A twenty, the twenty percent that you're going to use to flex is not used for a whole day. It's just used for one item that you want to flex with. Um, and then the sugary drinks. Once again, the more you put the good stuff in your body, the more your body would crave that. So you will begin to see your cravings for that sugar addiction that some may have picked up or that sugar craving that they pick up, you may see it start diminishing because you're feeding the body what it needs in order to keep continue to grow, especially on the cellular level. And your body is going to begin to crave the things that it needs in order to keep thriving versus just surviving. And on that note there, while we're trying to survive at a happy hour, how, <laughs> it, it, should there be a certain intake ratio for water to beverage, two to one, three to one to kind of like maintain certain uh, levels in your body from going one way or the other? Um, I like to use the uh, analogy, just drink half your body weight, make, but do it intentionally every day, at least half your body weight, unless you have, and this is a dis disclaimer. I don't know anybody that will be listening to this. There are, uh, there are health issues or anything. So please consult your primary care or your medical provider. And but, please visit the good people over there at First Choice Primary <laughs> Care over in Rockville and visit uh, Coach B. Fit there. But on the cheap, lit, on the cheap plug there, uh, yes, please, definitely continue. Yeah, but um, a half your body weight of water to stay hydrated. and But the thing is, is be intentional about that. Don't just be all over the place drinking, drinking here and there. Be intentional about you know you drank. 64 ounces a day if you're 128 pounds you drank at least 64 ounces of water you know that you you set yourself up for success because you measured out what type how much water you're going to drink it when you're going to drink it and that way the body is, is uh has plenty of fluid in it 
And so by the time you um, get ready for your um, beverage as far as alcohol, um, that's, that's, uh, that's on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. I can't say, hey, you can have one or two drinks a week or one a day. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. But I will tell you to at least drink half your body weight of water every single day intentionally. 100%. You know, our body is mostly water at the end of the day. So, you know, it's definitely something that we want to stay, you know, <laughs> up to speed with, you know, keep uh, plentiful inside us. And um, this talk about sort of moderation, balance, discipline has also got me thinking about the flip side of things with exercise. You know, I know for me, sometimes I try to get in this overload mode where I'm like, oh, if I just work out every day of the week for this amount of time, then, you know, maybe I'll reach my fitness goals, but find that certain practices like that may not have the greatest longevity. Uh, I was just wondering if you could discuss a bit the importance of rest and recovery in conjunction with physical therapy exercises and how you educate clients on balancing activity versus rest. Okay, so I usually give these three points, These I call them three keys to life when it comes to your fitness and nutrition. If you have, you, you, you must create a vision, just like people create um, financial visions, business goals, and all of that. You have to first locate where you are physically, locate where you are health wise. Ask yourself, what does being healthy and fit look like for you right now? Not when you were in high school, not when you were the best football player in the world, but what does being healthy and fit look like for you right now? So once you create that vision and your vision should include any comprehensive care plan that you may have been um given by a medical provider or by a uh, nutritionist or PT. It should include that. You you have direction. You know wh where you're going. You If you ever get off track, you can always say, okay, wait a minute. I know how to get back on track. So your vision, your health and fitness vision should include exercise, rest, sleep, those, those three key components in creating a vision. And then number two, you create a, a POA, a plan of action. A plan of action is actually the steps that you're going to take in order to bring that vision to fruition. OK, you got to know you got to know what does it look like to improve my quality of life? What does it look like uh, drinking more water? What does it look like to exercise five days a week? Does that look like uh, maybe getting somebody to watch the kids for an hour before I get off work? And that way I can go to the gym, go to the local park, uh, walk before I leave work. What does that look like? Create the actual steps so you can know exactly what you need to do to be able to drink extra water, more water a day. Does that look like sitting a bottle of water on my bedside table? So when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is chug that down at least 16 ounces of water. What does that look like? So you're creating a vision of what does being healthy and fit look like for you. And then you're going to create the steps that it takes to accomplish it. And the last thing, you're going to need that that motivation. You're going to need the courage so it can take you beyond the number on the scale. So it can take you through any setbacks in life, because whether you have a setback in life, a life issue, an obstacle, a monkey wrench thrown in your schedule, you don't have to get all bent out of shape. You can always look back at your vision and say, hey, I stopped right here. Let me go back to this. I didn't. Let me start back with exercising. Let me start back with drinking my water. So that courage would take you far beyond any obstacle in life. So I hope that kind of helped. No, Thanks. absolutely. You need a game plan. You need guidance and you need discipline. And we're going to ask one last question here to Belinda Johnson, nutritionist and health and fitness coach over at First Choice Primary Care in Rockville. Uh, Belinda, Coach B Fit, if you could wave a magic wand, what would you like to see changed in your industry? Oh, wow. Wow. That's a broad question, but okay, I, I'll narrow it down to one. <laughs> Yo, yes, we're going to have you back on to do the other 2,346. It's, it's putting more value on fitness, nutrition, primary care, and the PT, making it a, more communication with the whole team so everybody can be together for the patient's plan. I just think the communication with the whole team is what we kind of lost, especially after the pandemic, when things began to open back up after the pandemic, the loss of communication with the whole team for the patient. So I wish we can put that, take that back up to a 100%.
communicating with the whole team so everybody can know exactly what's going on and know how to make the tweaks where they're needed and the adjustments where they're needed. So putting communication back on into the um, healthcare industry with the whole team. 100 percent and you know that's something we work on a lot in our industry as well you know with our physical therapists communication is key whether it's with your with your patients whether it's with you know other practices that you're working or collaborating with um it's definitely important to always be on the same page so you can make sure you're giving the highest level of care possible and you know before before we go i had just one last question for you sort of going back to the physical therapy sort of realm of things uh you know i know that you you do a lot of your work in the nutrition space health and fitness coaching i just wanted to know in your experience as a fitness coach how important has physical therapy been in staying healthy and fit oh it's been like it's top priority because that's where most of the mo the gaining the mobility, the balance, and the strength can come from. So that is is very important in help building the strength and balance in the strength of the patient. Because if they are on a com if they are following a comprehensive care plan, physical therapy is a very important part of their plan because it helps build the strength that they may have, you know, was stripped of from be having a heart attack, maybe a stroke or kidney failure or uh, high blood pressure because it zaps your energy. It, all of that, that, the physical therapy plays a huge part in helping them build the strength, the mobility and the um, flexibility as well. That's great. Re really appreciate, you know, you walking us through, giving us the insight, you know, how these realms work together. I know we've definitely learned a lot about, you know, what it's like to be a nutritionist, what comes with it and the different strategies you can you can implement to make sure you're living your healthiest and fittest lifestyle. Yes. And stay tuned. We will start the Rye Guy 30 day challenge uh, with Coach B Fit. We want to document uh, his progress so people can see firsthand how these programs really work and how attainable and achievable by anyone. Because if Rye Guy can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the benchmark right there. It really is, uh, like uh, Belinda said, taking those first steps, small steps at a time, uh, and you know, staying disciplined, you know, making sure you have a good balance and you know, keeping accountable. So, you know, again, really appreciate your time today, Belinda. I know our, our meeting time is coming to a, to a close end. I think we got about three minutes left before it closes on us, but um, is there anything you wanted to shout out or say before we wrap up for today? Um, I want to say uh, once again, thank you all. We appreciate you. We are, you all are one of our top people that we do refer our clients out, patients out to when it, it, those that need physical therapy, I appreciate you all teaming up with us and keeping the communication open so yeah. we can all be on one, one page, helping improve the quality of life of the patients. And um, I'm Belinda Johnson, your fitness and nutrition specialist. I look forward to seeing anyone that listens to this that's in need of a nutritionist and of course a primary care with Dr. Aria Rucker. We are available at First Choice Primary Care.